Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our program for A24's The Farewell Film. Um, today, myself and a few of my colleagues are going to be discussing the film, um, different aspects of the film, and um, breaking it down as it relates to real life and culture. Um, so I just want to start off with introductions. My name is Cinnamon Better, and I work at the Oxen Hill Branch Library. I'm uh, Jade Campbell. I work at the Mount Rainier Library. I'm Daniel Hampton. I work at the Spaulding's Branch Library. I'm Rachel Troyanos. I work at the Bowie Library. My name is Bashir Kareem. I work at the Fairmont Heights Library. My name is Lauren Roots. I work at the Oxen Hill Branch. Thank you all for joining us, and um, we're just going to get right into it. Um, as I said, the movie that we're doing today is The Farewell. Um, this is the fourth movie in our A24 series. Um, and if you're asking what is A24, it is a film distribution and production company. Um, they provide support to independent filmmakers, which gives them a lot more um, creative leniency and freedom in production um, and allows them to stay in line with their visions for their films. Um, so my first question for today, um, let me read you guys the synopsis first. Billy's family returns to China under the guise of a fake wedding to stealthily say goodbye to their beloved matriarch, the only person that doesn't know that she only has a few weeks to live. So the first question I want to ask you guys is, is there such a thing as a good lie? Oof. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's okay if the <laughs> lie doesn't physically hurt anybody or it doesn't, you know, financially cripple somebody. In this case, I think there were a lot of lies being thrown around that, you know, mm -hmm. they seemed innocent at first, but some of them I felt like <laughs> growing up, you hear like stupid child or you hear like your Chinese is bad. That might either discourage you or that can push you to become a better person. Uh, compared to what you might think you already are. Yeah, I don't know. In the beginning, Nai Nai and Billy are both like immediately lying to each other too on the phone. Right. Um, so it's ironic yeah. to me that this whole movie is about a big lie and, and Billy's becoming okay with it, considering she was fine lying to her grandma about wearing a hat or having earrings in her ears mm -hmm. at the start. And, and I mean, like, if you're if you're talking about it a lie like what what is a good lie a lie is a lie does it matter right how big it is or the intent behind it so i don't know this is a hard question for me i don't i don't know if it's there's such thing as a good lie i have a, i have a lot of trouble with lying myself right yeah, i think a lot i really of... feel like the sorry Go ahead. Daniel. <laughs> now I was just gonna say because I feel like a, I feel like the purpose of all the lies in the movie was trying to get those ethical questions thrown out there for you to think about. It's like mm -hmm. she was like Billy was lying to her dad about her fellowship. She was lying mm -hmm. to her grandmother. I mean, they were telling her, her Chinese is bad so she could get better. So it's just like every scene contained about four or five lies. Right? Mm -hmm. So it was like having to sort which ones are good and which ones are bad, I feel like just gets you, it's like that slippery slope into, I think that's why Billy became more comfortable towards the end lying to her grandmother because she, I think she had a reckoning with herself that she's been lying this whole time too. So mm, it's like, okay, yes. well maybe this is a good lie because you know, everybody's happy, everybody's partying and everybody's mm. seemingly having a good time. So maybe it is okay. Personally, I, I, I I'm with Rachel. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was it's a lie. Like, even the whole the whole wedding was a was practically a lie. But yeah. not everybody knew at the wedding, right? You know? Right. So, but yeah, that is a rather large lie for the people that do know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think you, yeah, like you said, like, Rachel, it's it's not very um, cut and dry. Like you can't say yes or no, but it's kind of like it falls in that um, 
the gray. that gray area where it's like, I mean, the lie was kind of harmless. Like it's still a lie, but it, it hasn't hurt anyone. Like you said in the beginning, um, Nana and um, Billy were both lying to each other. Nana saying that she wasn't at the doctor. She was at her mm -hmm. sister's house. And um, Billy saying, oh, that was just my friend when yeah. she, did not, she didn't even know the girl. But it's like those harmless little lies that kind of just serve to keep um, I want to say, I don't want to say irrelevant information, but um, just to keep the conversation going. Mm -hmm. um, and even in the, the scene with the massage parlor, when the, um, the masseuse was like, you know, we call everyone beauty. Like, even if they're ugly or pretty, it doesn't matter. We call everyone beauty. And then it's like, oh, well, I want to be called beauty. So it's like little lies like that don't really hurt anyone. Yeah. I think a good lie is is when you, you, you say something that actually brings two people together. Maybe like they're at odds and they're, you know, they're opposed to each other, they're, they're enemies, but you, you, you say something uh, to one of them or to both of them to try to get them to reconcile. So you mm -hmm. can say, you know, so-and-so actually, she really thinks really highly of you. Um, in an attempt to try to bring, you know, this, well, this 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 discord between two people. I think I think mm -hmm. there can be good lies. Um, a good <laughs> lie. No, your wife a good lie. Um, she can make you a, a meal, and it may not be rocking, but <laughs> crush her dream. You don't want to crush her. Right. So, I mean, this was this was outstanding. This was delicious, mm -hmm. and there's no harm in that. She's going to be elated. She's going right. to be happy with you and and I think that was part of um I think their rationale in telling this lie thinking that they're protecting uh their grandmother uh, by telling her this lie but you know this one was a little bit different because as as Billy had said what if she wants to say goodbye mm -hmm, um, right. in her own way? you guys are denying her that 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 opportunity so you know so it's a lot different but you know, than telling your wife, you know, the spaghetti was, was rocking when it wasn't. So my, but, wife, my wife's spaghetti is rocking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even know if I buy that, Bashir, because, yeah, you tell her it's great, and then she brings it to a dinner party, and everyone's like, <laughs> oh, like, you know, yeah, exactly. like, you played the foundation with a lie. Like, yeah, so, like, now she's embarrassed. Yeah. Now you guys are having problems because you lied yeah. to her. I, yeah, no, I like, don't know. <laughs> So I'm, I don't think that that's okay to lie to your wife. You could say like, this is really great. Maybe next time though, I would have mm -hmm. done this. <laughs> True. Constructive criticism. Constructive criticism is not a lie. Yeah. yeah, like I just, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> or even the reconciliation thing that you said, like then their entire reconciliation foundation is based on a lie. Mm. And like, that just seems like a shaky foundation to me. Oof. That's a good Can point, Rachel. If, uh... <laughs> if Billy's parents didn't come out with the truth to her, yeah, imagine mm -hmm. how upset she would have been if you know that mm -hmm. lie would have persisted. Yeah, that it was just a wedding that she wasn't invited to instead of you know. Oh, she would have been devastated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like she was when her um she talks about shortly um, a little bit about her grandfather passing and yeah. how nobody told her about that and they kept her in the dark about that and how she felt and it was kind of like one day he was here and then the next day he was gone and she didn't really yeah. get a chance she didn't get closure with him like she wanted and because one of the things i was thinking about too in this case is you saw them driving off if their grandmother had like fallen really ill and like dropped dead like she would have practically died alone by herself so like what kind of like that's like emotional distress that the grandmother even herself could have been in mm. Yeah, I think, and also, I mean, if, if the truth wasn't conveyed to the extended family and little Nana, you know, her, her younger sister, mm -hmm. kept the CT scan results to herself, um, that, that really would have been, um, that would have been devastating to the entire family. So, but apparently they, I mean, this is quite normal um, in, in the Chinese culture, apparently, um, that they, they try to keep this type of information from um, the individual who is going through um, a terminal illness. Mm -hmm. um, so I had I had heard something that you know when Lulu Wang wanted to you know make this film, she took it to 
some Chinese producers and they were like, this is not mm-hmm. out of the normal. This is not unusual. This is, why would you want right. to make a movie? About, this is so commonplace. Um, but it's apparently it, it, it struck a chord with um, audiences in the US. Well, in the entire movie uh, production, I don't know if you also read this too, they, were li- they did it where her grandma actually lives and they were mm-hmm. currently lying to her grandma right. during the production of this movie. So it was like a lie with a lie. <laughs> like wow. the, she would stop right. by the set and everyone had to lie about right. <laughs> knowing that he also had cancer. Like right. it's like so crazy to me. Right. So just a little background on this mm. movie. Um, Lulu Wang, who is the director and writer for the movie, um, this is based loosely off of um, her own real life situation. Um, her grandmother was diagnosed with having cancer and was given about, um, I think I might be speaking incorrectly, but I think it was she was given six months to live. And it's been about six years and her grandmother is still alive. Um, So she wanted to bring this story to life and um, she went to um, producers in China and they wanted to place white characters in the movie. Um, They were trying to kind of take away from her vision for the movie, um, which is why I was so excited to talk about the movie. Um, And Bashir also brought up a really great point about um, protecting um, the grandmother and how the family just felt like they had that responsibility of keeping the secret from her to bear that burden for her for her so that she wouldn't have to be um kind of burdened with knowing that she was about to die um so i do want to get into that a little bit later um the next question i have for you guys is describe a moment or scene in the film that you found particularly moving or something that stuck with you and why I love the scenes of them sitting around eating and talking and the cooking and the kind of chaos of everyone being together in this one small house. Uh, it just felt very familiar to me mm. and I really, I really liked it. And I don't know, it just made me feel like I was part of the, the family a little bit too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I liked a lot of the themes with Billy and Nai Nai. Um, but specifically the scene with Billy and Nai Nai exercising in the yard where they're <gasps> like inhaling. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, and I, I, I love that like initially Billy's not really into it, but her grandmother mm-hmm. is kind of able to bring out this, um, she's, she's able to kind of bring her out of herself, out of mm-hmm. her her moodiness and out mm-hmm. of everything the weight that she's carrying mm-hmm. um and of course we know that we're inhaling in oxygen and ha huh, we're exhaling right. out like, <laughs> bad Nonsense. energy or bad right. toxins and i love that 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 moment is also echoed at the very end of the film mm-hmm. yeah, that she's yep. echoing like she's pushing out all of that bad or all of that negative energy so mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. definitely one of my favorite moments i had a few others but right. i'll I'll hold on to the <laughs> So I enjoyed the scene where, um, you know, they just forged the doctor's results and they're all walking away straight <laughs> towards the camera. It is like yep. the hardest scene in the yeah. whole film. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, we're about to carry Nana's legacy. We're about to carry her burdens. And they're just prepared as a family. And I really thought um, that was amazing how it showed them really coming together in that very moment for, you know, the senior of the family. Mm. Yeah, um, my favorite scene um, was the cemetery scene. Um, I thought um, the the levity in that scene, you know, the balance between, you know, comedy and drama, I think. Right. A normal job Mm -hmm. um, striking the balance. Um, But, you know, as someone who who studies sociology in school, like, I'm always amazed by how, how people um, of different cultures, um, handle different, you know, social, um, situations. Mm -hmm. So that, that situation at the cemetery was quite unique. I mean, I'd never seen anything like it. They bring the food, right. They offered the the grandfather a cigarette. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And they're like, and your yeah, grandmother's like, no, he stopped smoking. They're like, no, he didn't. He did it. (laughs) And it was news to her. Another lie that was uh, (laughs) right. Um, and then, you know, then they, they asked him for his blessings and then they kept, mm-hmm. you know, devouring. Um, and it was, it was, it was just a really, it was, it was eye opening to see how other people 
or other people of other cultures um, treat their visit uh, to the cemetery. I thought it was mm -hmm. quite, quite unique and quite funny. I really like that scene too, um, Bashir. Um, like you said, I think it's interesting how um, other cultures give thanks to their ancestors and um, kind of just pay tribute for them leading the way um, for us and making a way for us. Um, like you said, they really mixed very well the comedy and the drama aspect of it. Because even in this scene, like we see Nai Nai still trying to be a caretaker and care for her husband and protect him. And she's like, no, don't give him cigarettes. And uncle is like, What's the worst that can happen? He's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they did a really good job of mixing like comedy and drama because in those moments, you know, sometimes at funerals, there are a couple of laughs and people are still crying. Like there's a, a mixture of grief and also like, I don't want to say hubilation, but everybody is together and it brings this sense of um, just feeling like you belong. And so there's mm -hmm. an ease that comes with that. Um, my favorite scene, um, was when they were in the the hotel room looking for the bride's earring. She had lost her earring. And um, this was when Billy had finally broke down and was like, you know, my fondest memories are being in China with my grandparents. And you guys took me away from that. Uh, we're in the West now. And there's only three of us here. We were with our grandparents. I used to play in her garden. And so I think that I related to that because I just think that fa being with family is so grounding. And I feel like because she was taken from that, she kind of felt alone. And so being back at home, even though it's for a sad occasion, um, she kind of felt like that's where she needed to stay. Um, so I really like that scene because it, it just helped me to, I guess, understand Billy's um, perspective a little bit more of why she didn't want to abandon her grandmother because her grandfather had kind of had the same fate and she hadn't had a hand or any say in that either. Um, so I really like that scene. I think my favorite scene, well, it's more of a clip than a scene, but it was like <clears throat> when Billy was playing the piano and yeah. I just, it's, I kind of connected to it because, I mean, she was a classically trained pianist. I was classically trained as a, a pianist for a time. And I just connected with how she was feeling in that moment. Um, like the music she was playing was very choppy, very confused, very frustrated, very, very blatant, very just, you could tell she was feeling frustrated. You could pretty much tell how she was feeling in that moment about everything. Mm -hmm. it, it was disjointed. It was it was just disconnected from everything, mm -hmm. and that's how she had been feeling. So right. that was that was the part that moved me, I guess, the most. It was like, yeah, I can really, I really connect with how you're feeling because, as a person who also plays the piano, I tend to like hop on the keys every now and then just to get some frustrations out or emote mm -hmm. through some type of artistry. Right. I also like the scenes um, with like, they were like kind of like cityscape scenes and intense music and no talking. Mm -hmm. um, those were really like powerful, like the loud moving music, just like the scanning mm -hmm. of like the city um, and not really many people in it. I thought those were cool mm -hmm. as well. Nice. Yeah, there was a scene I enjoyed where uh... Nai Nai was telling Billy, you know, if you're at the wedding and someone asks you to sing, mm -hmm. like, don't move around and basically mm -hmm. don't be a party pooper, but, you know, get up and sing and have, have fun, live life. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of moments where Nai Nai was pretty real and down to earth. Uh, like when she was talking about her grandson's uh, wife or future wife, <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't affectionate and things like that. A poor angel. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wouldn't be in the bedroom if I wasn't here or something like that. Right, right, right. <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, so I like that Rachel touched on um, the music and the scenes and the, the idea that there weren't many, uh, there were a few scenes where there weren't any talking. Um, so I kind of wanted to touch on theme a little. Um, so what themes resonated with you guys um, while watching the movie or maybe something that you thought about after that was kind of lingering in your mind? I think the strongest theme for me was, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I talk a lot. <laughs> I was going to say, I think the strongest theme that resonated for me the most was probably family in a weird way mm -hmm. and how family bands together when one person is in need or in trouble. Mm -hmm. 
mm. and just coming to help shoulder that burden, as Jade was saying earlier, just shouldering that burden for one person can really have a lasting impact mm -hmm. on, you know, I guess the, longe the longevity of life, ultimately. Honoring tradition was a, was a, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> Let Rachel go. <laughs> oh, go, go. I had a question about like what Daniel just said, actually. Like, I wonder um, if the theme of family is as well received for someone who doesn't have a close family. Right. Um, and how this movie would be, you know, like if they could even relate to this movie, if you don't have a large or close family. Um, if, so I don't know, I, I was just posing that question. Um, before um, you go today, I'm sorry, I wanted to comment on that really quickly. Um, the I do too. I, <laughs> yeah. The reason that I related um, so closely to the scene where Billy is like, you know, you took me from, you know, my home pretty much, like, you know, when her parents moved her from China to America, um, where she felt the, her most genuine self amongst her elders. Um, and I relate to that um, so much because um, a lot of my family is in North Carolina. Um, my stepfather's family um, and my mom's family. Um, we used to take frequent trips down there during the summer um, and stay for weekends at a time. And um, that was, you know, when all of the family would get together, we would have nice cookouts and just gatherings um, with the matriarchs of the family. Um, and when um, my stepfather's sister passed, that kind of stopped. Um, so we don't go to North Carolina to visit anymore. We don't have family gatherings a lot. And so I kind of understood how she felt being separated from, you know, that close knit family, because now my family isn't as close knit. And I think that because you have those deaths where the matriarch that is responsible pretty much for bringing everybody together and making sure that we all stay united as a family um, when they pass away. If nobody else picks up that responsibility, then it kind of just, you know, goes away. Um, so I think I related to it in the fact that I was, it was nostalgic for me, um, even though I don't have a close knit huge family anymore. It was kind of like, at one point, that's what it was. And so I related to it in that aspect where I can remember childhood memories where my family was like that. And feel how Billy felt about being separated from the family that, you know, that she knew in China. Yeah, just piggybacking off of what Sinwa was talking about, I don't, I come from a similar situation where my family was once close-knit, but now, like, my grandmother had passed, so mm -hmm. we're not as close-knit as we used to be. Um, I definitely think this movie just resonates, it still resonates, I just think it resonates differently. Like it, it puts you in that nostalgic place. And I think it also has the potential to like inspire change or inspire the mm. person watching to be that matriarch or patriarch right. to bring that family together for those nostalgic feelings. Just mm. kind of maybe do like a course correction in a way. Mm. So I, th I, feel, I feel like it does resonate. It just, I feel like it would just resonate differently. Right. Yeah, seeing their family, it, it kind of made me think about my own daughter um, there was a scene where, uh, you know, uh, Billy's dad, they were sitting down and he, he asked her, Joe, do you need any money? Do you need anything? And, and basically just basically just offering to provide for her. And I was thinking about my own daughter. I was like, man, I want her to have this type of connection to her family, to her grandmother, to me. Um, you know, I want her to feel comfortable. I want her to know that we're, we're here behind her. Um, and that kind of brought me to, that also connects with the theme of uh, like honoring tradition and just, mm -hmm. you know, upholding what's been passed down through the family for years and years. And, you know, um, just supporting them, supporting the beliefs that, you know, your family has provided and has continually flown through the bloodstream. Um, mm -hmm. So like honoring the lies that they were telling, she did a pretty, she, she had to come around if she wanted to, you know, uphold those traditions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I want, I want that for my little baby too. <laughs> <laughs> Bashir, what about you? Oh, let's see. Um, I was struck by the um, the duality of you know li life in China and life in America, okay. and this whole notion of which is better. Um, mm. We have a lot of people um, who 
who um, who who come you know to the United States um, and and the, and the the notion a lot of times back in the other countries is that life is has to be better um, in the U.S. Um, and sometimes it's vice versa. Some people feel very uh, nationalistic and they feel the country is the best. And um, when Billy was asked this question by the um, the bellhop at the hotel, you know, mm-hmm. which, which country was better, you know, being that she, you know, she experienced both lifestyles and she just said, it's different, you know, it's right. and, and, and that should have been enough um, for mm-hmm. him. It was really hard for him to, to come to grips with that notion. And I right. think, um, you know, I've lived abroad, I've, I've lived in the United Arab Emirates, and I used to get that question a lot, like, you know, which, which country do you prefer to prefer to live in, which is better? And I'm just like, you know, there's, I can't say which is better. There's some good things about this country and some good things about that country and some mm-hmm. things that are not so good about this country and not so good about that country. Um, so, you know, this notion of, um, you know, some country being superior to another, I think this mm-hmm. is something that, you know, I was reminded of this, this, this mindset when I saw this movie and that um, something that I'm, I'm happy that I don't, I don't, have that that type of mindset. Mm. Nice. Lauren, what about you? What themes resonated with you or theme? I think everybody pretty much covered it. I thought like family and culture were probably the biggest ones for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Preserving your, preserving culture and also rallying around your family. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also say the theme of sorrow um, is throughout the entire movie. Like, you, even when you start to forget that's why they're in China, mm-hmm. like something brings you back. Like, like uh, Billy will be like having a good time and then like kind of gets a sad look on her face or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, it's you can tell that she is like, oh shoot, I'm here because I'm saying really goodbye to my grandma. Right. Um, yeah. I think the theme of sorrow throughout the entire movie was very um was very apparent and also yeah. like this in a, in a smaller way the theme of being like young and poor as well like <laughs> i really resonated with um <laughs> billy like, she can't pay rent she has to use her credit cards to pay for her flight right. like she does her long parents house mm-hmm. it just felt very relatable um you know and her grandma giving her money and saying like don't use this for practical things on, like rent you know right something my grandma literally did <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, def- it's a definite processing of grief theme that's central to the movie. Um, I wanted to talk about the theme of um, keeping up appearances or I guess putting mm. on a brave face. Um, throughout the movie, um, we see people constantly telling Billy like, why are you so sad? Why do you look like that? Go get a massage, refresh yourself. Her grandmother is telling her, you know, when you get to this party, when you get to the wedding, don't look all mopey. When people, you know, you need to be going out and shaking people's hands and smiling. If they ask you to sing, sing. Um, her asking her to get up on stage and give a speech, knowing that um, from what I observed, Billy was kind of stoic and more um, introverted. Um, So that was probably a task for her to get up and speak in front of all those people, especially after being told that her Chinese wasn't good the whole movie. Um, And just uh, the idea that you have to be strong outwardly, even in, even though inwardly you're probably falling apart. Um, I, I just, I was just so amazed at how she kept it together throughout the whole movie and the people that actually broke down were the ones that no one was worried about. Um, her cousin and her uncle ended up like completely falling apart, which is understandable, but it was like Billy was the one that was expected to have on his brave face and, you know, be the, the, the strength of the, the immediate family. And um, I just thought that also spoke to how women are supposed to be like strong and not show any type of, um, I guess, sadness, even though, you know, you might be dealing with something inwardly um, or internally. Um, so I, I, I noticed that throughout the film, um, multiple times that Billy wasn't able to really express her feelings. And if she ever looked sad or looked like she was kind of spaced out, somebody would try and correct it and say, hey, why are you looking so mopey? Um, also, yeah, she wasn't even supposed to be there. <laughs> right, right. 
So now that she's here, <laughs> she's expected to like put up this facade and act like she's happy when in reality mm-hmm. she's very sad. Um, Meanwhile, Cuzzo over there is crying in the corner. Right. <laughs> When he finally broke down, I was like, oh my goodness, these are drunk tears. He is a mess. Somebody please go console yeah. this man. Like, I felt so bad. Because I don't think he was ever even, he wasn't ever even approached, I don't think. No. Mm-mm. Not about. But he was throwing him back, though. Each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> he definitely was. I, I, I was a little confused about something. So was that a sham wedding or was it, or was it real? I don't it was know. Real. I think it was a real wedding, though. But see, I thought it was—I thought it was a sham wedding that they kind of—I think it was like a real sham wedding that they kind of put together so that That's the family was could like so band much. together. Right. I think it was I don't a think... legal wedding. I think it was a legal wedding, but it was kind of. But I like... don't think they were supposed to be getting married. No, no, because no, you know no, they no. were saying they were trying to uh, forge how long they were together. Right. Yeah. They had six only been dating year, for about yeah. three months and they were like, no, let's make it six months. Right. And then it was like, no, we might as well just They're make like, it nah, a year. A year sounds right. better. And then I was like, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> was, was, this, was this girl in some ways forced to marry this boy? Yes. Uh, was this forced <laughs> to marry the girl? Because think about it, they barely didn't even know each other, which is why the guy up on stage just started singing and they looked awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Even the photo shoot, when Nana commented yeah. that they weren't very affectionate, it, it looked very forced, and both of them looked visibly uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You don't think it was legal, or you do think it was legal? No, I do think it was a legal wedding, but I think they just yeah. got married just because... They needed they a reason to get to. there. Right. Okay. I was thinking it wasn't legal, but she, like, had agreed to do it, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. at least. Things. But I don't know. They never really said. Right. And we only see the reception, really. We don't see a yeah. ceremony at all. We just see them eating and drinking and dancing and singing. So we don't actually see like a official yeah. wedding ceremony. So I don't know. Exactly. It's quite ambiguous. <laughs> I hope they're not married. Like, <laughs> it just seems know. like awkward. What a right. sad life. <laughs> right. It might be worth it to take a look and see if we could find some information on um, Chinese wedding customs, because it could just be that this was, because um, it's a, it's a dinner, it's a, a banquet. So mm-hmm. is it possible that mm-hmm. it's almost like um, a, an, an engagement dinner of mm-hmm. sorts, or hey, maybe. It, you know, something where it's not that they had to get married per se, but they're on track to be, or... Um, this is before an actual wedding happens. They have this where everybody can come and celebrate. And so I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I was right. just thinking about that as we were talking. Well, That's I don't know. Cause, but didn't the grandmother say like, she either said like three days or three weeks when she was talking to the chef, but she was trying to get him to make lobster. He three was days. Crab. She I said think that was another lie, by the way. Yeah. So I think like they're getting married in three days. I was like, oh, man. Mm. Um, I also wanted to just quickly talk about um, how um, births and deaths kind of bring families together, but our daily lives kind of take us away from each other. Um, Because, you know, you'll see it all the time. You get together at a funeral and you're seeing people you haven't seen in years and they're like, oh my goodness, we got to get together more often. And the next time you see them is at another funeral. Um, so I, I just liked how yeah. um, they kind of showed how death is bringing all of these people together. The brothers hadn't been in China at the same time for about 25 years. And um, they kind of dropped everything when they knew that their mother was, you know, terminally ill to come and celebrate her life. And I just think that that just needs to happen more often. Like, you know, life does get in the way of you connecting with your family. But I think it's just so important to not just visit them and gather with them um in times of like turmoil um but to also just celebrate them along the way like Mm fine time pretty much um so the next question i have for you guys um is that in some cultures there's a notion that if you um, tell someone their diagnosis it may lead to them giving up um so what are your thoughts on um the power of words to heal or harm someone or yourself 
Well, I mean, I think not wanting someone to give up because you want them to stay around feels very selfish. That's a mm -hmm. selfish act. Um, and I mean, I, I agree, I guess people could fall into a, a depression or something knowing their diagnosis, but like mm -hmm. they might not too. So like, I don't know, being the, given the opportunity to decide one way or another, it doesn't feel mm -hmm. like it should be someone else's choice, choice but I, I don't know, right. I, I understand. I mean, then maybe that's because I'm from America. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, so I don't know, I mean, you want them to keep fighting just so you don't have to deal with the loss of them. Mm. But like, I don't know. I don't know. That wasn't a fully formed thought. Yeah, I kind of feel, I kind of feel where you're going with it though, because it's almost like, you know, they have that saying knowledge is power. So it's like withholding that knowledge from somebody whose diagnosis is actually is, you're, you're, mm. you're taking that choice away from them. Yeah. Like they, you don't know how it's going to affect them. They, they may be like, okay, well, that's nothing. I'm going to beat it anyway and still live yeah. my life. <laughs> because yeah. even when everybody thought, even when she was even thinking something was wrong with her, she was still like, well, I'm still going to live life. So it was right. like, okay, so how do you guys know she wasn't going to have the same reaction actually knowing her? Right. I, I just, and I have trouble with the term fighting cancer as is because I, I don't like how it insinuates that if someone was like tougher or like had just tried a little harder, they could have like yeah. eaten cancer. And yeah. I just don't know that that's that's the case at all mm. you know that's true um i think that as far as the power of like words to like have an effect on you overall um I, i'm a firm believer that the mind is really powerful um, and you really have to be careful with the things that you say to yourself and about yourself um, because they can manifest themselves in, you know, your, you know, how, you know, you go about your life. Um, I don't think that if you have an optimistic mindset that you can beat virtually anything that comes at you because it does sometimes take more than that or require more than that. Um, but I do think that... I don't know. I just think that you have to speak power into yourself and not necessarily talk ill of yourself. So maybe that's why they chose not to tell mm -hmm. her is that um, Billy had commented that, you know, she's her usual upbeat self and she's going about life as normal, but she should be in a hospital bed. And it's like, maybe if they had told her, she would be acting as if she was sick because she knows that she's sick. But yeah. since she doesn't know that she's not sick, she's, you know, pre like pretty much going about her life as it is because she isn't aware of her illness and how it should be affecting her, how she should be looking and acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, this is the same thing that a lot of men get knocked for in terms of not going to the doctor to mm -hmm. find out what's wrong with them because a lot of times they're mm -hmm. fearful of mm -hmm. finding out what the, the issues are. And so mm -hmm. they prefer to just, you know, go through life not knowing. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just, I'm thinking about that, you know, the, the mm -hmm. not knowing, because in our culture, if, if you refuse to, to find out what's going on with you, that's that's looked down upon, but in mm. in this movie, they made it seem like if this person is is not aware of their condition, um, then then they will most likely live longer. They said one of the right. things they said is Johnny's saying is that it's not the cancer that kills you; it's the fear. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I think a lot of that is you see that that belief manifested in a lot of men sometimes where they just mm. feel like. I'd rather not know. I just because right. once you know, then you know. It's a lot that comes with knowing too. It's a like change in routine. Mm -hmm. You got to change your whole life around sometimes. I feel like that also comes into play, causing people to say, "Okay, hold on, I'm, I'm comfortable doing what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to prepare for something that may be devastating." Or yeah. yeah, one of the things I think differentiates the two situations there is just like this was more of. Uh, forced ignorance like it was her family who kept this information away from her mm -hmm. like like you were saying men today 
is that's more of a self-imposed ignorant situation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the, I think that's kind of where the differentiation comes from. Because mm -hmm. like, yeah, you're taking it upon yourself to not be informed. But mm -hmm. in this other situation over here, like, like Rachel was saying, her choice was taken away to even know because I mean, she was like, I mean, they they went so far as to forge documents <laughs> to, keep the to keep the truth from her. So I, I don't know. I don't. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. That's, that's like a super gray area. <laughs> I honestly think Nai Nai knew. I think she had an idea that she was sick. I think so too. There were moments where, and you had to remember that she, you know, she told her husband the same type of lie. So mm -hmm. I feel like the first scene when her sister lied to her, she kind of knew that moment, okay, I, I'm, there may be something wrong, but I have to, you know, keep yeah. going. Because yeah. were, you can yeah. see moments of hesitation. Right. right. Where she even looked at the document saying, she kind of paused a bit. I, like, I this figured, is fake. Yeah. I've seen this trick before. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I did this 20 years ago. <laughs> right. Good point today. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, what is benign shadows? I mean, Right. Why? <laughs> we never got that answer. All little nine nine said was that's what the doctor said. <laughs> <laughs> so Daniel talked about um, the choice of knowing your condition and um, the, I guess, the freedom of being able to choose um, how you go about. Um, treating yourself when you find out that you have a disease. Um, so I feel like that's kind of normalized in American culture. Um, do you guys think that the process of diagnosis, treating, and prognosis um, creates more anxiety? Or do you think it um, creates more clarity between patient and doctor? I think it's different on like a case by case basis because it's like, how are you going to react to your diagnosis is purely internal. Like I said yeah. before, you're, like, you're gonna have some people who are like, okay, well, that's nothing. I'm gonna keep living my life with this positive attitude. Right. I'm gonna continue to speak life into myself yeah. versus getting down on myself and getting depressed and wallowing in my diagnosis. I think, um, I don't know. And I, I just keep thinking back to that scene where she's talking to the hotel guy and she just keeps telling him it's just different mm -hmm. because like those are two very strikingly different aspects between the cultures mm -hmm. that's why she was like saying this how do you say illegal right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like in america that would be illegal but in right. china it's accepted and from the way the movie depicts it encouraged almost Right. In America, they almost go out of their way to not share the patient's information with anyone but the patient. Like, if you exactly. even, even want us to share this information with your mom, you have to give us consent because, yeah, she's your mm -hmm. mom, but you are a full grown adult responsible for your own decisions. And so medically speaking, you have to take accountability for how you go about being diagnosed and being treated and how we share that prognosis with you. Yeah. So I have a question. Uh, Daniel jogged my, my thoughts just now. Um, so if we take the inverse of this, of this situation in this movie, what comes to mind is, is what unfortunately occurred with um, Chadwick Boseman, mm -hmm. um, Black Panther, in that he, he knew what he was dealing with in terms of cancer, and yet he, he kept it to himself or probably to his close you know family and 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 the public didn't get an opportunity to say thank you we appreciate you we love you for all that you've done um mm. the situation was the, the exact inverse and and i i just I'm, I'm wondering you know how how you all think about what do you think about his decision um to and not necessarily lie but but not fully not tell people uh, what the reality was with him. You think he really owes that to anyone? Do I think he owes it to anyone? I, I, no, he doesn't owe it to anyone. Um, would it have been nice um, for to know in order to, to let him know that, you know, we appreciate all that he's done and, um, and you know, we, we care about him? 
it would have been nice to be able to, you know, send those sentiments in some way, shape or form. I see that, but then also I feel like that's him having to take on sort of the sadness of other people too mm. during a time when he he's, I mean, I, how I would feel is like, I don't, I don't need to, to be taking on other people's like sadness and like, but I, I see what you're saying for sure. Um, it was it, it just very abrupt for everyone else. Yeah. Mm. But sure, I, 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 he had been fighting it for a while. Mm -hmm. I get what Bashir is saying, but I also think that um, you have to give people their flowers while they're here. I think that once Chadwick Boseman made Black Panther, he, everybody, nobody held back on how that movie made them feel. Everybody was going around for weeks like this. Like he, <laughs> he did not, I don't think that there was ever a time where he felt like he wasn't appreciated, like people didn't love him, like he had influenced an entire culture. Um, I don't, I think that he knew his influence on the world, on Black people, on the, I guess, the film industry being a Black superhero. Um, so I, I think that, like um, Rachel said, like, he didn't want to shoulder other people's sadness. He probably didn't want to be remembered for being sick in those last few years or months of his life. He wanted to be remembered as a strong Black Panther, as that person that young boys and other Black men looked up to. Um, so I personally, I, I admire him for that. And I really, I'm grateful that his circle did not ever let that um, information leak. He was able to go out with dignity and not with people feeling sympathy for him. Um, so I, I just say give people their flowers while they're here. You don't want to wait until somebody says, hey, I only got a few months to live. And now all the congratulations and the appreciation is pouring in when that should have been happening. Yeah. So. But thank you, Bashir, for mentioning that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean to validate you or anything. I just yeah. was posing questions. <laughs> no, it's an open discussion. Everybody okay. is welcome to share what they think and what's on their mind. And I definitely appreciate you bringing it into the conversation because um, it was a shock to everyone, I think, when that happened when he passed. Um, so do you guys have any lingering questions or comments about the farewell that you wanted to voice? Oh, I'm just, I just want to say that, you know, um, I'm just so grateful to the Prince George's County Memorial Library System for, you know, allowing us to have free access to Canopy to take in all these awesome movies. Mm -hmm. I didn't really get an opportunity. I never knew the the wonderful amount of movies that they have on this platform. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, it is just spectacular. And I think that, you know, I just hope that our viewers, you know, they really um, take advantage of this canopy mm -hmm. with all the phenomenal movies that it has. So um, I, I thank you for bringing me into this, this, this virtual library program because I was, I mean, we have a lot of resources mm -hmm. and um, I'm, I'm still trying to, get around to them, but this helped me to expedite my exploration of Canopy mm -hmm. and I'm not turning back. Um, I've, I've, I've added it to my smart TV, so I have an app mm -hmm. dedicated. Yep. Yep. So I can just mm -hmm. pull out my remote and there's no signing in, it's just boom. And it's just a plethora of, of phenomenal award-winning Sundance movies that um that are that are new and, uh, and highly acclaimed. Uh, mm -hmm. This movie here was, came out in 2019. Right. Um, and they were talking about, you know, Oscar buzz and, and all of this stuff. And so mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a lot of great movies on campus. So thank you, DCMLS. Thank you so much for bringing that up, Bashir. I keep forgetting to plug Canopy. Um, we're only talking about movies in this series that are available for free on Canopy. Um, Canopy is our online movie resource. You can find independent films, um, other, other films, um, documentaries on there, um, and it's all free with your library card. Um, I also have Canopy on my smart TV, but it's not, you can't access the captions on your TV. Um, I think the mm -hmm. captions are only available on your laptop. Um, so for those of you who like to have the captions on when you're watching movies, oh, it's on TV too, Rachel? Yeah, I use it on my Roku. Oh, and it's captions on there? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I have to they figure have that out then. I have captions. Yeah. 
Oh, <laughs> maybe it was just for the movie that I was watching. Maybe. Um, yeah. Okay. So get on it, cinnamon. So for some some <laughs> movies, the captions are available, and other movies, the captions are not available. <laughs> this is user error. Sorry. <laughs> I gotta look at that. I um, wanted to yeah. ask everyone. I think that we kind of like. I can kind of tell. But did you all like the movie? Oh yeah! I love yes. It. Yes. No one I, I liked explicitly it. say or Daniel. ask. Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, you didn't like you it. You didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't oh. one of my. Fa- it wasn't one of my. It wasn't. <laughs> 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 it, it wasn't one of my favorite movies. No. <laughs> okay. Why? I'm just curious. What were your? Um. Um, for me, it came down to like just technical execution things. I just felt like it could have been done a little better. It could have been acted a little better. Mm-hmm. But the story is good. It was I like more complex storylines. Like I love Black Coat's daughter. Mm-hmm. It was really complex. So you had to really think and follow through with it. Mm-hmm. Um, this one was a little more simplistic, um, mm-hmm. and it, it was a struggle for it was a struggle for me to keep attentive to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. But but yeah, story was great. Um, I just the execution of it for me was it just wasn't there. That's understandable. I enjoyed it. I thought it was gonna make me cry, but I managed to get through it without shedding any tears. I almost cried at the ending. It wasn't a real so great. <laughs> the grandmother, like you know, you know, she doesn't really break down and um, right. So so yeah, it didn't really evoke a lot of crime and stuff like that. I think it probably would have been sadder had um, she been, you know, told and ended up in the hospital and I guess if she looked sick, but um, like Billy said, you know, she's acting her regular upbeat self, like nothing is going on. And so I think in that way, it was a little bit more heartfelt and not sad. Like, wow, like she's dealing with this illness and she's pushing like, nothing is going to stop her like she's continuously bossing people around like she normally does it's not really affecting yeah. her um so i really like that and, about the and, film and yeah, i think I they really did a good job show, of uh, weaving in that com- that comedy in it too so, mm-hmm. yeah. when they showed nine nine at the end i that that almost had me cry a little I bit know. because i was just so happy i was like <laughs> yes <laughs> The real nine. The real nine. Yeah, the real yeah. nine. Oh my goodness! I felt yeah. Oh my goodness! Put a big smile on my face. And it made me think that she is still alive. What if they had told her about her diagnosis and she had like found out and it kind of beat her down and discouraged her and made her think like, oh, well, I'm going to die in a few months. What's the point? Like, I think them keeping it from her, even though some people might not agree um, that it was right. I think that it helped her to continue to push instead of um, Mm -hmm. thinking about how much time she had left. Um, So very well to it. Right. Um, I had a question about the bird, the bird yeah. that um, snuck into Billy's parents' house, I think, or I think may- maybe it was her apartment, um, and then it appeared again when she was in China. Um, I just probably should have looked more into it about what it was supposed to symbolize. Um, you know, I've heard Billy Lang talk about it, mm-hmm. and I still can't wrap my mind around the, the purpose of that bird. Right. It was very, the explanation was very opaque and mm. um, I thought I was going to get some clarity I was like okay she's going to talk about the bird and right. I'm confused at today as I am when <laughs> I explain it so yeah, did, you find did it they relate to the birds. flock of birds that flew out the tree at the end that that was um, I put that I did some reading on that one it was when you know when that, um, Billy did like huh at the end mm-hmm. it was yeah. the birds outside of nine eyes so it's like saying the family oh, across nice across the world. Ooh, nice. did read something about the bird that kept visiting her, but I can't remember. And I, I don't think it fully cleared things up for me either. I, Bashir and Rachel, I watched an interview or I heard an interview with Lulu Wang. And at one point she says, um, if you see meaning in something, then it's meaningful. And if you don't, then it's not. And so she said that the film itself is all about perspective. And I think we could say the same for the for the bird if you see meaning in it then there is meaning in it if you don't see meaning in it then there is none 
That's precisely what she said in, in the video that I... <laughs> then we, yeah, then we, we definitely watched the same thing. But I think, it, I think it goes overall to even the lies. If you see meaning in the lie, then it is meaningful. If you don't see meaning in it, then it means nothing. Hey, Lauren. Okay. That'd be Thank you. Lauren coming yeah. in strong. <laughs> always. That's always. all Lulu Wang. That's what, oh, I'm sorry. Lulu, it's Lulu Wong. I do appro I apologize for that. Yes. <laughs> this is what we leave you with. If you see meaning in it, there's meaning in that. <laughs> right. That's the perfect segue to the closing. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I want to thank my colleagues for joining me. Um, I really do appreciate this forum. Um, it has made me delve a lot deeper into watching film and kind of dissecting it and picking apart what different scenes mean and uh, overall theme. Um, so I appreciate you guys for motivating me to be a better film watcher. Um, and I appreciate you um, viewing this. Um, thank you so much for tuning in to our discussion and participating um, and maybe watching the film along with us. Um, we will be back next month with another film and we hope that you will tune in then as well. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Peace. <laughs>